In this video, I'm going to talk about three ways to level up as a junior developer. So what are the first ways? Um, let me share what I did when I was trying to get better with JavaScript. So I was in the JavaScript world. I became a front end developer. I was a UI engineer initially. Um, and I, you know, I was pretty comfortable with CSS and JS. And I, at least I thought I was, and I was a uh, pretty comfortable with the react as well. And then I remember leaving that position, going into the second position. And the second position really showed me how bad I was with JavaScript. Like I was really bad compared to a lot of other people on the team. And so uh, I learned over time that the reason why I was bad was because I really didn't have a grasp on the fundamentals, at least as strongly as I thought I did, right? And so the best thing that I did for myself was I jumped into Eloquent JavaScript. It was recommended by one of the developers on the team. And Eloquent JavaScript has some depth to it, right? And it really helped me understand JavaScript a lot better than I originally did, which then allowed me to just kind of like grasp and understand the concepts and debug, I guess, like more trickier situations with React. I knew what React was doing. And, you know, I really could start to design like a really, really basic fundamental front end framework for myself if I really put the time into it. Now, it's not going to be something like React, but, you know, at that time, I could have just built a basic version of React and I was capable of that. But before I dove into Eloquent JavaScript, I don't think I could have. I didn't really understand what React was doing. I didn't, right? And I feel like there's just so many building blocks that make up the abstractions that we have where it's easy to just put this software, this framework on a pedestal and it does all these magical things that, uh, it was built by developers way more brilliant than us and we just could never understand like what the hell is happening right but sometimes you do and so it's easy to just like put that off like oh maybe one day i'll be that good of a developer but i think that's more achievable sooner in your journey than you think it is and i think a lot of people could build a basic version of react if they have two to three years in the industry like a really basic version it just depends on how comfortable you truly are with the fundamentals of the language that you're working on. And I've realized, like, even if we moved out of React, um, even if we built something custom, uh, for example, one of my positions, we had a custom library that worked like Redux, right? We didn't use Redux, but we had a custom piece of software that worked like it. And I could kind of understand the inner workings of that the further I dove into my fundamentals. And I think a lot of people, and I would really challenge yourself, do you really think you understand your language? Do you really under, think you, or do you really think you understand programming fundamentals, especially if you're going the alternative path, as well as a CS grad, as well as someone who really likes to explore and tinker and they're curious and they want to keep asking why does this work why does this abstraction work how does this abstraction work they just keep digging deeper do you really think you understand or like have a solid grasp of fundamentals as much as you think you do i think most people don't and i think it takes many many years to even feel like you do to then understand you could still go so much deeper right but I think that's an aspect of growth as a junior developer that I like. I start to see people moving from a junior to a mid-level developer when they really, really build that solid foundation and they care about it and they dive deeper and deeper and deeper and don't just lean on abstractions, right? Without understanding how those abstractions work and how to break those abstractions down if needed. Focus on those fundamentals, build those up. We all have to continue to work on this. And it's just one way to level up as a junior developer. The second way is your process. I don't know about you, but when I first started, I loved just writing code and seeing what happens. That was fun. 
Um, I got to see whatever popped up on the console log, whatever popped up on the page, right? And even in my personal projects, I would just build. I would like, I'd start with a navigation. Okay, let's build a personal project. Well, I think I can at least do a navigation. Well, if I can't even do that, I could do maybe like the top of my landing page, right? Because I, I'm not super comfortable with building a hamburger menu just yet. So I can't really build a mobile version of it. So let's just do like a really basic landing page. I'm going to build that out. And then I'm going to add the navigation. And then I'm going to, I don't know, maybe add a form and maybe, or maybe a contact email on the bottom. And I might add some links for my footer on the bottom. And now let's add some other pages, right? And I kept adding and adding and adding. And I kept thinking, like, what else could I add? But I never stopped to think about what the hell I was building, right? I didn't plan it out. Um, I just kept adding blocks to my project, this little modules. I just kept adding and adding and adding. And I never really thought about the problem that I was trying to solve. I never really thought about the content that needed to be on the page. I never really thought about the users that were gonna use my application and what were their priorities. And like, what the hell, what kind of problem am I trying to solve? What the hell am I trying to do, right? And so, you know, you're gonna have a stage where you probably should just take a day and just code and not, you don't really need to think about like, oh, I gotta build this expert project. No, I just wanna build something. Let's just code it out. Let's just write code and see what happens, right? That That's okay, right? But over time, especially when you really want to be seen as a professional developer, especially when you want to start moving to even that mid-level position, right? Um, you really shouldn't be leaning on your product manager to write technical requirements. Like that's something that you should take ownership of, right? So even if you're not really solving the business problem and you're given the solution and you have to come up with the technical requirements that make up that solution that's a step up i remember when i was starting out i was given those technical requirements and i just went line by line by line by line and i solved those things in my code but it didn't really require a lot of critical thinking or planning right i wasn't really mapping out the entire feature and all those building blocks that made up that feature. I was just building it and then building on top of that and building on top of that until I created what was asked of me, right? That's what a junior developer does. That's what a basic junior developer does. But once you start moving more towards that mid-level range, like you're taking ownership of the app that you're building, you're taking ownership of the feature and you are writing out those requirements and you are figuring out the scope of this feature and you are figuring out potential blockers and you are writing tickets for all of this, right? Writing issues on your Epic or however you want to organize this. You are planning all this out and you're able to tell that project manager that, hey, you know, like hash this out. This is going to take this amount of time. And then, you know, when you start moving into the mid level, you are starting to take more ownership over your parts of the app, right? You might get some user feedback. You might hook up your uh, part of the app or set up events to be triggered with Google Analytics. You might want to pay attention to um, hot jar recordings. You might want to figure out like how people are using your app. What are the frustrations, right? A really valuable thing to do as a developer is once you build something to take ownership of it and track that what the hell is happening are users uh frustrated with your feature are they exiting out right away how do you figure that out right how do you and it, once you do and you realize hey you know like even if you just got some user complaints from customer service or whatever like then what do you do about it do you depend on the product manager to then um map out more features or create bugs for you. No, you, you pop up a bug um, in Jira and because you, you heard some complaints about it or you experience a bug yourself, you create that bug and you prioritize it and you got to realize like, okay, so what, what parts of my features or what parts of the app have significant traffic going to it that might lead to like failed conversions and lost revenue for the business. Like a lot of developers don't start thinking about this, but this is where you start. 
This is where you start to become a user-centered developer that cares about the features that, features that you're building. You take ownership over your part of the app and you're proactive with creating potential features. And you might have some uh, stakeholders that you got to run your features through, but it's like, hey, you know, like when you start taking ownership of um, a part of your app that could be inc so much better, and you propose something that, you know, where you could official, efficiently plan this entire thing out, you you come out with a proposal and you come out with issues and you come out with a, a bit of a timeline and you take ownership and show that product manager or whatever stakeholders are gonna care about this. You say, hey, you know, I can get this done in a week or two. I really think it's going to help people going through this flow of the website, this part of my app. I think it's gonna make the user experience way better and here's why, right? And then you start you start actually documenting what this feature is, like the details of this feature, what is gonna mean complete with this feature, and then breaking it out into its technical requirements, which is gonna start with breaking it it out into its pieces, its modules that you're going to work on, try to split that up and then more specific, uh, more specific technical lists within each issue that makes up this entire feature that's going to take two to three weeks or whatever. Like this is the kind of mindset that it like good mid-level developers will start thinking about. And it more is in line with just be coming a developer that takes ownership over the work that they do over the parts of the app that they manage over the shit that they build for users and they care about it right but you know it it starts with this user-centered thinking but when you have to break this down into its technical requirements um, and figure out like okay what are going to be maybe spikes maybe things that I need to dig into that I'm a little unsure of. Like, what are the hardest parts of this feature? How do I figure this out? How do I figure out if I can get this done in two weeks? Often it's like, it's usually prototyping or tackling the hardest thing first and making sure that you have that down. It does work within your application um, before you dump all of your time into building out a bunch of small stuff to then, like, if you take two weeks to build out a bunch of small little pieces and then you get to the, a really hard part that just doesn't work for your app or it's going to take three to four weeks that's what junior developers do that's what like really starting junior developers do they don't really plan this out they don't prioritize things properly you should be able to tackle the hardest thing and figure out can i do this in two to three weeks right and then break it down from there into smaller issues and plan out your sprints It's more, it almost is more of like, a, it starts with like a, a product ownership role, a user, you become a user center developer. And then before you even dive into the code, building out a bunch of shit that might not matter, you plan this out. You are able to identify the really hard part that you need to tackle and why it's difficult and how you're going to go ahead and actually learn this, whether it's like looking through documentation, whether it's building like a mini prototype, uh, just to test this and prove this. Um, you, you have to figure out like where you even start, but it, it starts with planning. It doesn't, this mid-level mindset doesn't start with you just jumping into the code and building out a bunch of small things to make yourself feel better and get those dopamine hits. It, it requires real planning which requires context, which requires obviously a solid foundation with fundamentals, but you know, a broader context of like how your application works. And it requires you understanding, you know, where stakeholders want to take the business and you know, where your users are at. It, like there's a lot to this, but it's planning. It's, it's building up your process around coding and building that just focuses more on initial upfront prep that's the second thing now the third thing is soft skills one thing you'll notice um with a lot of senior developers that you know mentor people at your company that a lot of people respect they have good soft skills right they care that they, they have good listening skills they have good active listening skills they care about what you have to say especially if they're mentoring you as a junior developer um you know they they want you to almost get there 
get most of the way there on your own and do a little bit of research on your own. And they want to build resourcefulness. They don't want to create dependency, right? They don't want to just tell you the answers right away. They want you to learn how to find the answers. So, you know, that's a soft skill or that's um, just a good mentorship skill senior developers have. But, you know, other senior developers, you'll notice the way that they interact with design, they interact with product, they interact with, you know, CTO, different just different stakeholders in general, like they become good active listeners. They understand the business requirements. They understand the user's concerns. They understand different stakeholders' concerns. They understand the frustrations that the designer has went through uh, with the front end team and the back and forth that doesn't always hash out cleanly. And they try to empathize with that. And they try to just understand like what the designer like really needs from me at this time as I talk to them. Um, and what their expectations are and like you're going to find it's not just different stakeholders have different expectations of the conversation with you and they, they want different things from you but it's also different personalities within that department that you then have to figure out and maybe um i don't know maybe jill is really gets really defensive she has an ego right um maybe jack comes in hung over every monday and Monday's not a good day to, you know, like really be critical of a lot of stuff with Jack, right? With his code reviews. I, and, and that's what it's about. It's about understanding the team that you work with, the individuals that you work with, and having some empathy in your conversations and just working on your soft skills, your people skills. This is a big thing, right? Um, a lot of juniors come in with egos and, you know, I'm not saying it's a good thing, but it is common. And those egos, if you want a long-term career as a dev, that, that needs to be crushed to an extent, right? That ego prevents you from learning, from growing, and from connecting with people on your team who are going to contribute and want to help you grow and learn and build yourself up and build yourself up within the company as well. Like there are politics within a company, right? You know, a lot of people don't like office politics. I, I don't know what to tell you, they exist. Start your own company if you don't want to deal with it. Oh, wait, you are going to deal with it because you're going to have customers. Trust me, that bullshit never goes away. It just changes. Its form changes. It's like a ditto that just constantly changes into the next Pokemon or the next challenge. I, I'm not really good with analogies, but you get what I'm saying, right? Um, you're never going to be able to escape from having poor soft skills. And this is not a profession anymore for 99% of developers where you can just get away with being just a grumpy developer with an ego that just sits in the, a corner and codes all day. That's, that, that's not a reality for most developers. And you, you have to just accept it, whether you want to or not, and just work on those soft skills. So three things, um, really getting a solid fundamental uh, foundation, which most junior developers don't have, right? Because it takes a lot of time to do it. Um, and reworking your process, taking more ownership over what you're doing, like actually critically thinking about the feature that you're building, breaking that down and then breaking that down into more technical requirements. It requires a lot of, you know, thinking, not coding, thinking initially, planning. And it's just a mindset you got to shift. You could do that. You could just shift your mindset, right? These are just things that you, you kind of start out at a certain point and you start shifting it over time. This is a very normal process for a lot of developers that are in this for the long run. And then your social skills. And I know a lot of people don't like when I say this, but it's just true. You can't escape it. You know, like you're, you're working with people, you're building stuff for other people. You, you got to build up your social skills, no matter how uncomfortable that is. So these are three ways to level up as a junior developer. Um, if you have other ways, uh, definitely let me know in the comments, but that's all I have for you. Happy coding.